This marks the end of season four of Movie Feuds. It was a fun year. I did over 50 feuds. If you saw the last video, you would have saw the results of the first 25 of those. Today, we're gonna go over the other 25. I did pretty well on the first half. Let's see how I stack up and how you stack up this time around. Judging by the low voting numbers, it was clear that no one really cared about this 300 follow-up. I certainly thought it was about five or six years too late. So did you. Leonidas wasn't there, neither were the votes. Same central characters, but polar opposites in terms of delivery. The 2014 Hercules decided to gloss over Herc's accomplishments in a four minute opening montage instead of focusing on how cool he was as this super powered badass. Disney takes the win. So do I. Two of arguably the greatest dramas of all time duked it out. Voice personality Fallon from KDWB came on to feud with me. She was pretty confident going in that Gump was going to win. But just like the security guards of Shawshank, she underestimated old Andy Dufresne. Potter Month starts out intense, with both the first two movies neck and neck. Sorcerer Stone, or Philosopher's Stone for you dick pickers, won by just two votes. It was clear from the start that Twister was going to win this. Into the Storm didn't have it. Into the Storm won. <laughs> what? Did you guys watch Into the Storm? The movie was fucking terrible. The acting was atrocious. The found footage style was a gimmicky mess. No, Twister is not a work of art by any means, but it was a hell of a lot better than Into the Shit. Christian Harloff from Schmo's Blow was kind enough to come on and get his ass kicked by me. I'm a big fan of the Avengers, even though I will freely admit it's a messy script with some pretty corny moments. Guardians is just so damn fun though, and anything that's remotely campy is fully intentional. Plus, Dat Awesome Mix Volume 1 has some great jams. I somehow tricked the Nerdist into getting Jessica Chobot onto my show. There, it's possible death threats were put into play. Whatever it takes to get a guest on this damn thing, right? I could have just as easily defended the original TMNT as it has a lot of nostalgia for me, but really, they're both pretty dumb and cool at the same time. Yet, there still is a solid amount of kick-assery, and the sequel announcement finally having Bebop and Rocksteady in play has some potential. Short for potential. Let's see how the second installment plays out. I can assure you, we will be feuding those two. Secret of the Youth versus... Let's go. Week two of Potter Month kicks up, and with it, two of the best in the franchise, if you ask me. John Bailey from Honest Trailers joins me, and surprisingly, you guys went with Goblet of Fire, over Azkaban. I thought for sure Azkaban was going to take the Quidditch Cup. You proved otherwise. Once again showing me I have no idea what the audience likes on this show. If the interest level for 302 was at a 1 out of 10, then the sequel for Sin City would be more like a negative 10 out of 10. Nobody wanted this. It's been far too long and when it came, it felt more like a been there done that than a wholly unique film. <music> Author J.K. Rollins went on record and stated, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is her favorite of the franchise. I read that somewhere on the internet, so it must be true. I'm not sure I agree with her on that, but it did nail the tone of the book and the style. You guys agreed. If you would have told me one day that I would pick a Vin Diesel film 
over a Stallone, Snipes, Banderas, Schwarzenegger, Jet Li combo, I would have hit you multiple times with my car. You would have been right, though, as you lay there on the ditch, bloodied and bashed, and I drive away laughing hysterically. The third Expendables movie was a PG-13 bullshit mess. I couldn't stand it. It was so watered down with their cookie-cutter action and their new kids on the block routine. Meanwhile, our Fast and the Furious crew keep getting more ridiculous and more fun with every installment. I didn't need to bother with this feud, but it had to be done. It was the end of Potter Month, right? Splitting the book up into two meant we had to wait even longer for that resolution that's been building up over a decade, plus the books before it. We're just chomping at the bit. Not even a naked CGI'd Hermione could save part one. I paid tribute to the late, great Robin Williams the only way I knew how, by going over some of his best family flicks and ignoring old dogs. I just wanted to talk Ghostbusters. I knew number two was going to get his ass kicked, but it was nice to even see a little morsel of votes for it. I think it's wrongfully bashed, personally. It's a good movie. Marlene from I Like Comics 2 came on and we battled which superhero movie was worse. I expectedly lost. I'm not really sure there was a winner here as I just battled the same movie against itself three times. Yes, trolling, not just for the comments. But still, seriously, how the hell did Maze Runner beat Catching Fire? Maze Runner was f***ing mediocre at best. It's pretty shitty, actually. If I could be honest for once on this show. Both these movies were recommended by Feud Nation, so I'm very thankful that you guys brought them to my attention. I loved them both. They're right up my alley. Non-stop action. The sequel somehow gave us a smart script, too. The cinematography's beautiful, everything really comes together. I don't care who won. Because at the end of the day, we all did. <laughs> Woo! We have ourselves a tie here. The new carry might have added a fresh coat of paint and some special effects, but it couldn't beat the superior acting and the better ending of the original. So a tie, yeah, I buy it. That seems right. On occasion, I will play the devil's advocate. I will go for the underdog film, the one that I don't necessarily think is better. I've done this two or three times. Psycho vs. Psycho is definitely one of those. The original is, is such a brilliantly made film. It's a uh, timeless classic. Dave Ryan from KDWB chose that, so I had to take the updated retelling. It was a shot-for-shot -shot remake. It was extremely pointless. It deserved to lose. Good job. Another <laughs> nail-biting feud with Wreck-It going against Big Hero and just barely losing. Not even Fix-It Felix could fix this mess. Wow, I f***ed that up. Let's just use it. Let's just use it! Jonathan Paul has been on my show twice and both times he's won. His prize? Never coming back on my f***ing show. He'll probably be back on. The fact that Dumb and Dumber 2 got a single vote is ludicrous. The rapper. It must be the same people that voted on Into the Storm as the winner. Yeah, I'm really raking you guys under the coals. The department store. I don't know. Did not expect Toy Story 2 to take this win, but I'm happy it did. It's my favorite of this almost flawless franchise. 
You've got a friend in me indeed. People go ape over these films, and I'm one of them. Don wins. I think Rise is a little bit better of a movie, but I'm now William Shatner. Although the votes have been tallied and we are closing down the season, that doesn't mean the feuding's over. Uh, not even close. Go back, keep voting on these older ones. Someday down the road in the future, we will look back and see if anything changed, if people got smarter on some of the worst films that I disagreed with, or if people just got more dumb. Out of the 50 episodes, I ended up with 28 wins, 21 losses, and one tie. I hope to score much better in the new season in January. Now, there are a couple straggler episodes that I put out, like Alien vs. Predator and Frosty vs. Rudolph, that need a little more time to stew. I'm not a Jeremy Johns or a Chris Stuckman. I don't get hundreds of thousands of views upon my uh, first upload, unfortunately. Those guys are, are doing much better videos than I am. I can't even compete in the quality level or the charisma or whatever the f*** you guys want. What do you want from me? Help me!